are in Lisbon, one of the most charming cities in Europe. The transformation of Lisbon in the 19th century, especially after the victory of the Liberals over the absolutists in 1834, marks an era of progress and modernization in Portugal. This change was not just political, with the establishment of a system that shared power between the monarchy and the assembly, but also material, evidenced by the construction of essential infrastructures such as trains, railways and the telegraph, so the so-called grey infrastructures. The Liberals in the Lisbon City Council adopted a progressive vision that incorporated the concept of green infrastructure. This focus not only enhanced the beauty of the city, but also reflected a new philosophy of urban life and state responsibility. This innovative approach also extended to other areas of responsibility, such as education, health and sanitation. So the construction of schools, cemeteries, hospitals and sewage systems came to be seen as a state obligation. We are in a symbolic location of this transformation, the Avenue of Liberty, which is a boulevard, the hallmark of every modern 19th century cities. The Passeio Public that existed here before was dismantled to give way to this avenue. Historiography has always seen this dichotomy between the Passeio Public and the Avenue of Liberty, but the research conducted at Sucht has demonstrated that, in fact, it was the Strille Garden that should be in the equation, because it was the Strille Garden that was competing with the Passeio Public, and in the end, it is the one that lies behind its fall. Urban history of science, technology and medicine is a relatively new field within history of science. It crosses urban history with history of science, technology and medicine, and for the past 20 years, historians of science have addressed urban history of science by really taking seriously the agency of cities. What we are looking at is how science, technology and medicine are co-constructed with the city. Why then should we study Lisbon? Lisbon shares many common dimensions with other cities. It's a European city, it's a capital city, but it's not in a central position within Europe, but it is in a central position between the various continents and as being a port city, it has been always a node of transports, communications and commerce. On the other hand, it's the capital of a big empire. So there are these different dual characteristics that are intermixed in the way science, technology and medicine develops within Lisbon. We want to study science in Lisbon from the perspective of invisibilities, from the perspective of socio-technological imaginaries, and from the perspective of urban connections. Invisibilities because we are being bolder than usual. We want to look at science where science usually is not looked after. In the Portuguese pavement, in working class neighborhoods, leisure spaces, like the Luna Parks. Socio-technological imaginaries point to the fact that very often there is a distance between what we project and what is really materialized. The socio-technological imaginaries have to do with the idea of an imperial metropolis and the idea of the gateway to Europe. Looking at urban connections means look at connections within the city, at connections tying the city with outward spaces, but also at intellectual connections, and from an historiographical point of view, really realizing that the city as a unit and as a historical agent really forces us to look at science, technology and medicine together. Most of the research that we have made about Lisbon was made at the archives of the Lisbon City Council and here at the National Library. And we have discovered very, very interesting documents. One of them is this marvelous map that shows all the work made by the Liberals during 60 years. 
before Lisbon just had the Passeio Público, one public garden, and now, as you see in this map, it's full of public gardens. And why that? Because the Liberals had this vision for the city. Greening the city for the Liberals had one main uh, purpose, and that was to elevate the level of civilization of the new citizen. And the new citizen had to be aware of his duties and rights, and for that he had to circulate it in the public sphere. There was no other place as the public gardens to do that. Besides that, the Lisbon case is really interesting also because it's pioneering regarding what we have, for example, in France. Paris became the role model after the urban renewal made by Napoleon, Osman and Alphen, but that is going to occur only in 1853-54. And what we have here is 14 years before, 14 years before the liberals were thinking about greening the city of Lisbon. And for that, they have created a department just for that at the Lisbon City Council. Most of the public gardens that we have in Lisbon today were made by them. The implementation of railways in Lisbon inaugurated new forms of mobility. Until then, people had uh, to walk or to use horses or ox carts to move around uh, the city. With railways, it was possible to move uh, faster. As a matter of fact, uh, the railways were, were very important to uh, inaugurate the pendular uh, movement between home and work. This was particularly important for um, the industrial activity of uh, Lisbon, namely in the areas of uh, Alcântara and uh, Sacavém. Until the advent of railways, the leisure areas of uh, Sintra and then Cascais were reserved for the wealthiest, for the high bourgeoisie, for the royalty. The railways, however, allowed the common Lisboner to uh, move from the city centre to those leisure areas in the outskirts of the Portuguese capital. The construction of railways in Lisbon had a profound material impact on the city. For instance, to build the Rocio station, it was necessary to demolish several buildings that were standing in its way and in the way of progress. The railway also had an enormous impact due to the construction of the tunnel. It was the longest tunnel in the Iberian Peninsula with a length of over two kilometers. In this vein, many other projects that represented progress were also proposed. These include a bridge across the Tagus uh, River and a metropolitan uh, railway that should connect Lisbon to the other side of the Tagus through a tunnel below the riverbed. The construction of stations brought about a new form of architecture and a new uh, type of uh, building. Those new elements that were included in the Rocio station's facade remembered details from the history of Portugal. It was the perfect fusion between technic feeling and patriotism. The first kindergarten ever established in Portugal was here. It's the Froebel School. Froebel argued that children should learn by playing and also by being in contact with nature. This time, at this point, children used to learn by working. So learning by playing was such a, a different idea, such a novel idea, that in fact this also shows the vocation of liberals to make modern things. Everything that the liberals were thinking for the nation, they were also thinking for the city. Estrela Garden was the liberals' flagship, and so everything, every idea that they, were, they considered modern, they had to do it here. What we have here is in fact the influence that stems from the French picturesque. It is already an adaptation and transformation of the English landscape garden in France. We are in the hospital Dona Estefania, a pediatric hospital 
inspired by the Florence Nightingale model. This hospital was built to fulfill the wish of uh, the princess Dona Estefania, uh, who married uh, Dom Pedro V in 1858. When the princess visited the Hospital São José, was completely shocked by children's state of poverty. Some of them were hospitalized next to, to patients with all kinds of diseases. So this place, only dedicated to children, materialized that wish. A hospital where a child was considered as an individual with the right to special care. She defended the model of a hospital where hygiene took the first place. Internally, meticulous attention is given to material selection, bed spacing, ventilation and cleanliness. As part of comprehensive childcare, the hospital created a primary school for sick children, which remain operating today. One of the most important things is the outside of the hospital and the green spaces to create a new atmosphere of leisure for patients, their families and medical staff. Hospital Dona Estefania was a key element for the emergence of pediatrics and nowadays the hospital maintains all the services and facilities that were present since the beginning the princess passed away at the age of 22. She never had the chance to see her hospital, and nowadays this princess is eternalized by this coat of arms. The construction works began on the orders of her husband, King Dom Pedro V, who fell in the next year victim of typhoid fever, a frequent disease at the time. Epidemics such as yellow fever or cholera were a strong impetus for urban transformation in the mid-19th century. For the search of solutions to what was perceived as source of contagion, namely the lack of circulation of fall odors, because it was thought that the source of contagion were the odors and not the water as we came to, to know later in the end of the century. With the introduction of the sewage system called continuous circulation, circulação continua, it was based on the circulation of water, but it was also a metaphor applied to street circulation itself to promote the decongestion of areas in the city, namely the downtown, the Baixa, and the exit to the north in the eastern part of Lisbon. To solve these problems, urban improvement plans were proposed. And these urban plans saw the street itself as the site of intervention, because the street was perceived as the problem itself and as the place where the solutions had to be implemented. Measures such as street widening and this new orthogonal layout would allow the introduction of new infrastructures such as sewage, gas, electricity, water, and also underground and on-the-ground forms of transportation. In Lisbon, until the mid-19th century, people walked on foot, by animal-drawn carriages, by the river. The first public land transport appeared in the 1830s and consisted of animal-drawn carriages called omnibus. Later, the so-called Americanos appeared and they were also animal-drawn carriages, but ran on rails. From 1901, the Americanos were electrified and became what we now call electricus trams. The expansion of the city and the development of transport went hand in hand, because not only did, for instance, the American companies propose themselves the opening of new avenues with certain technical characteristics that would allow the introduction of rails, but also the growth of the city itself was promoted by the expansion of the ground transportation network. These improvement plans also led to the creation of new avenues that were placed in the two valleys that were connected to the city centre, the Avenida da Liberdade and the Avenida dos Anjos, 
now called Almirante Reis. And this also meant that the city was turning its back to the river. Multimodal and multifunctional perspectives on the street have always been present. In the annual report of the Unión Velocipédica Portuguesa, which is the Portuguese Cycling Club and still exists, as early as 1901, they proposed a bicycle lane for Avenida da Liberdade. Despite being such a structural axis of the city still today, the multifunctionality of this avenue is still disputed. Campo Grande, in the beginning of the 19th century, was still a rural area outside Lisbon. So where there were fairs, vegetable gardens, and this was uh, what existed uh, up until the renewal, the urban renewal of the Liberals. After the making of the Lisbon Boulevard, the Avenue of Liberty, the Park of Liberty, it was logical that we would have a huge park in the outskirts of Lisbon, as it happens, for example, in Paris. And so Hassan Garcia had this idea of making a Bois de Boulogne here in this area. The project was amazing. It should be Lisbon's lungs. So, in fact, what Monsanto will become. The city started to grow so much in this area that the project did not uh, succeed. And then in the end, we just had this beautiful garden, which was already projected by the liberals during the second half of the 19th century. It was not totally concluded by then. It was only uh, during the dictatorship that this beautiful corridor, in fact, is a garden corridor. It has nothing to do with the project by Hassan Garcia. We are in an amazing spot to talk about sustainability and what are the values of a green city today. In fact, Lisbon won the European Green Capital Award in 2020 due to two factors. One is that the green area augmented enormously and the other one is that pollution decreased also. And today it is much more common to see bikes everywhere in the city. But for me, this is the outcome, this is like the evidence that the Liberals and the vision of the Liberals for the city was right, it succeeded. Now, in fact, we have a green and sustainable city. So, and we are in this marvelous lake just as they were in the 19th century. So everything made sense for them as it makes sense for us today.